Right then, zoning is a biggie. You'll use it a lot in your day-to-day -day job and it will be covered in the CompTIA Storage Plus exam so make sure that you get intimate with it. First up, at a very high level, zoning allows you to partition a SAN into smaller discrete zones making the partition SAN more scalable and more manageable. Let's do our usual and use a few pictures to paint the concept of zoning. On the slide we've got our mega simple SAN two hosts each with two HBA cards and a single storage array with four front end ports all of which are connected to dual redundant fabrics. Right now there's no zoning configuration in place meaning that both fabrics are wide open. Every device connected to fabric A can see and log in to every other device connected to fabric A and the same goes for fabric B. Now let's enable zoning and place a simple zoning configuration on each fabric. Now as we can see in the diagram we've got a single zone in place on each of our fabrics. Yellow zone in fabric A and yellow zone in fabric B. On each fabric the yellow zone allows host A to see, communicate with and log into our storage array. In particular the zoning in fabric A allows the top HBA in host A to see port P1 on controller A whereas the yellow zone in fabric B allows the bottom HBA to communicate with port P1 in controller B and importantly host A cannot communicate with host B or port P2 on the storage array of either fabric. This is because there are no zones configured to allow that particular access. So let's explain this. Once zoning is enabled in your fabric you effectively lock down that fabric meaning that all devices that are not in a zone in the active zone set will be unable to communicate with any other devices on the fabric. What this means in our little fabric is that host B is locked out and unable to communicate with our storage array. So even though there may be a valid physical connection from the top HBA in host A to port P2 on the array via fabric A, the HBA ports, switch ports, array ports, the cables, they all exist and they're all installed correctly so that you have got that good physical connection. The fact that zoning is not configured to allow the devices to communicate though means that no logical connection can be established between the HBA and the array port. A bit like two systems being on the same IP network, all cabled up correctly to allow a good physical connection, but if the firewall doesn't allow the two systems to communicate, then no logical connection can be made, despite there being a good physical connection. Anyway, in order for host B to communicate with our storage array, we need to create zones that will allow that access. So let's do that. As you can see, we've created zones for host B to communicate with port P2 on controller A over fabric A and port P2 on controller B over fabric B. But again, and of importance, host B can't communicate with anything else on the fabric it can only communicate with the devices that exist in the same zones that it does. And one final point while we've got our quick diagram in front of us. It's entirely possible and in fact it's actually extremely common for devices to exist in multiple zones, especially storage ports. So we could have zoned host A and host B in with port P1 on both controllers as we now show in our diagram. This is perfectly acceptable and like we say extremely common configuration. Ok, let's define some of the common terms relating to zoning. Funnily enough, a fundamental concept of zoning is the zone. As we saw in our diagrams on the previous slide, zones contain initiator and target ports and devices that exist in the same zone can talk to each other. Devices that don't exist in any zone can't communicate with anything and devices that do exist in zones, just not the same zones, can't communicate with each other. And an industry accepted best practice is single initiator zones. This is basically saying that each and every zone should only have a single initiator in it. You can have as many targets as you want in your zone, but only ever place a single initiator into any one zone. Following this principle will reduce the number of issues on your SAN and it'll make troubleshooting issues much much simpler. 
As we showed in our diagrams on the previous slide, initiators and targets can be members of multiple zones, and this is especially common for storage ports as they commonly serve multiple hosts concurrently. Now then, a SAN can have hundreds or thousands of zones, and these zones are grouped into zone sets. And it's common for fabrics just to have a single zone set, although it is possible to have multiple. Zone sets can obviously have multiple zones within them. Any fabric can only have a single active zone set. It is possible to have multiple zone sets defined in a fabric, but only one of those zone sets can ever be active at one point in time. Now let's look at a quick example here. If we want a host and a storage array to talk to each other, we need to place a port from that host and a port from that storage array into a zone, actually into the same zone. That zone then needs to be added to a zone set, and if we want our host and storage to be able to talk to each other now, we need to make sure that that zone set is the active zone set on the fabric. There's no point adding our zone to an inactive zone set if we need our devices to start communicating with each other immediately. And finally, most fabric technologies will require you to reapply the active zone set any time you make a change to it, such as adding a new zone like we just did there. Simple, but how do we actually specify a host port or a storage port in a zone? The two most common ways are either by specifying the WWPN of the host HBA and the WWPN of the storage array port, a technique known as worldwide name zoning, or alternatively we can enter the IDs of the switch ports that the HBA and storage array ports are cabled to. This latter example is known as port zoning. Both approaches work, both have their pros and cons. However, from my experience, worldwide name zoning is the most common form of zoning deployed out there in the wild. Specifying zone members by their worldwide port names allows you to move an HBA or a storage port to another switch port or even another switch in the same fabric without having to alter your zoning. After all, moving an end device to another location in the fabric doesn't change its worldwide port name. However, if you have to replace the HBA in your host, the new HBA will come with a different worldwide port name and that will require you to update your zoning configuration. On the other hand, port zoning, where we use the switch port identifier to identify our devices in our zones, this technique means that you don't have to change your zoning configuration if you swap out the HBA in a server, as this form of zoning doesn't care what the HBA's worldwide name is. However, if you ever need to move an HBA or storage port and cable it to another switch or another switch port in the same fabric, then you will have to change your zoning configuration. Now then, some people incorrectly refer to port zoning as hard zoning and worldwide name zoning as soft zoning. This is not the SNEER definition and it's not the definition that you should use. So let's get this right, as you may come across it in your CompTIA Storage Plus exam. First up, it's possible for both worldwide name zoning and port zoning to be either hard or soft zoning. So don't get it in your head that port zoning is hard zoning and worldwide port zoning is soft zoning. That's not the case. Soft zoning can be thought of as name server only zoning. When a device logs into the fabric, it queries the name server for a list of devices that it's allowed to talk to. The list that the name server returns is based on the active zoning configuration on the fabric. Basically, the name server will only tell the device logging into the fabric about other devices that are in the same zones that it's in. This way, the device performing the login gets a limited view of the fabric based on the active zoning configuration. And soft zoning stops there. From that point on, it's effectively a gentleman's agreement that the device will then abide by the rules and only attempt to talk with the devices that it's been told about by the name server. If the device decides not to play ball and decides to go about misbehaving on the fabric, there's nothing there to stop it and you'll have a troubleshooting nightmare on your hands. This though is where hard zoning comes into play. Hard zoning can be thought of as the sheriff that makes sure that devices play by the rules. Basically, when hard zoning is enforced, Every switch in the fabric inspects the traffic that it's forwarding and actively filters and drops frames that are not allowed according to the zoning configuration. Name server zoning is still in place, 
meaning that when devices log into the fabric, they still get that restricted view of the fabric based on the active zoning configuration. However, hard zoning sits there in the background as the sheriff of the fabric, ready to enforce the law. And fortunately, most switches support hard zoning. Now then, we mentioned earlier that most people tend to go with worldwide name zoning, where we identify devices based on their unique worldwide port names. And obviously, with worldwide names being lovely 64-bit hexadecimal numbers, they're really human friendly, and it's easy to remember every device's 64-bit worldwide port name on a SAN containing thousands of devices. Right, obviously I'm kidding. Worldwide names are ugly and they're not human friendly. What we need is a way to map these to nice human friendly names. And what we have is aliases. And aliases are great. Instead of having to remember that 50, 01, 43, 80, 06, 40, D2, 6F refers to HBA1 in my lab's primary ESX server, I can create an alias that maps that hideous worldwide port name to a nice meaningful name such as lab ESX1 HBA1. So using aliases can obviously hugely simplify management and troubleshooting of your SAN. And for this reason, just about everybody uses aliases. So that's us done on zoning. Maybe a quick recap. Zones partition our SAN fabrics into more manageable units that restrict device access and make management and troubleshooting easier. When creating zones, make sure that each zone only contains a single initiator. Zones can be either worldwide name-based or port-based, and if, like most people, you opt for worldwide name-based zoning, make sure you implement aliases to give meaningful names to the devices in your fabric. Each zone has to be part of a zone set, and while a fabric can have multiple zone sets defined, only one can be active at any point in time. When a device logs into the fabric, it gets a list of other devices that it's allowed to talk to, and this list comes from the name server, and it's based on the effective zoning configuration in place on your SAN fabric. Hard zoning takes a copy of the zoning database and inspects all frames traversing the SAN and drops the frames that are not abiding by the effective zoning configuration. And that's it! You're now ready to start zoning and well equipped to pass your CompTIA Storage Plus exam zoning questions. Now let's move on to classes of service.